welcome everyone to the talk by Wookie on rebuilding the whole of Debian on ARM systems. Okay, uh, thank you. So uh, we haven't got long and I'm hoping to get a bit of feedback about what I've done, so I'll try not to get into too much detail. But uh, basically uh, we built, rebuilt, did a mass rebuild of all of Debian uh, on uh, ARM64 servers. Um, normally I come here and talk about complicated things about tool chains and things we might have working in three years time, but this is just something we did. Um, uh, and it's within ARM, uh, and I think it's quite an interesting example of, of companies using our stuff and finding it good. Um, and I'd quite like some feedback from anyone else who's been doing mass rebuilds about how you do it. So the reason why is um, there was something wrong with an ARM core. There was an errata. They discovered there was a particular instruction sequence which could go wrong under obscure circumstances. So it's very important never to have that instruction sequence actually occur in the real world. Uh, and Debian is a really good example of everything in the real world. Uh, we've got ancient software and new software and a great pile of stuff. So if this instruction sequence never occurs anywhere in Debian, then that's a reasonable definition of we've managed to eliminate it. It's actually incredibly hard to tell when it'll never occur. But So they'd, they'd fixed bin utils in this case to uh, not emit this sequence and rebuilding all of Debian and Android and some other things. Um, they'd be reasonably confident that this problem wouldn't affect people. So um, they happened to know that I was the Debian build guy and nobody in else in ARM knew how to do this. So uh, I was asked to help. Um, this was an internal project. Uh, companies are very sensitive about their chip not working erratas, so they didn't want it getting out before it was already fixed. <laughs> um, so we couldn't use any external resource. And also, they're in a tearing hurry. They wanted it like, like we want to know by next week whether we've fixed it or not. And you go, OK, uh, maybe. I don't know how long it takes to rebuild all of Debian and ARM. It might take ages. Um, so uh, I shouldn't really be giving this talk. Uh, Edmund Grimley Evans basically did all the work. Um, uh, on making this work and fiddling about with things. And Thomas Prudhomme, who is a Debian developer, uh, produced the tool chains, and all I did was help. In fact, I definitely wasn't working on this because I'm supposed to work for Lenaro, not ARM. And Lenaro spends a lot of time trying to get its engineers to do the general collective things, not whatever crazy shit some company's interested in. Uh, so officially, I didn't spend any time at all on this. Actually, I spent a couple of days writing a long list of advice for Edmund. So this was pretty much a technology transfer thing. I know how to build stuff in Debian, lots of stuff. Uh, people in ARM don't, so now some people do. Uh, this is progress. Uh, oh, my browser JavaScript stopped. And maybe we'll think about changing page in some seconds. Does anyone know why Ice Weasel does that? It just kind of goes huh? for a bit. Uh, okay, it probably was two pages. There we go. Yeah, see, it does two pages. Um, so that we got some nice new hardware, um, 14 moonshot servers from HP um, in, our, in ARM's data center. Um, so this is a new thing. ARM does a terrible job of dog fooding. Everything they do is done on x86. Everything they ship to customers is for x86. They don't do anything on their own bloody architecture. It's terrible. Um, so some of us have been going on about this for a long time, saying, you ought to provide software to people so they could use your architecture, because you're kind of expecting them to. Maybe anyway. Stop ranting. Um, so anyway, they had some nice new machines for us to use. Uh, they were running Ubuntu, and they didn't really want to change that. But actually, it turns out, building all of Debian in a Chirrut on Ubuntu works just fine. Uh, and we had root access, so it was easy to set up. Oh, look at the fucking slides have stopped. Uh, this could get a bit tedious. I want to go faster than that. Uh, normally, I turn JavaScript off to make it stop doing this. But of course, these slides are all JavaScript, so that won't work. There we go. So uh, the obvious thing will be to reuse what people have done before for cloud building. Uh, I know Lucas has done lots of rebuilds. Um, but it turns out his stuff is all for Amazon Web Services. So uh, we couldn't use those because that's external. And also, it turns out they were written in Ruby. And all three of us had no clue about Ruby. So that kind of put us off. And I looked at all the other tools that might do this, rebuild and debeal and maybe want to build. Um, all of them had issues, so you couldn't actually install Debeal uh, earlier this year. Apparently, you can now. Uh, as far as I know, Rebuild D has no idea of multiple build nodes. It just has like the one. Um, and one build is designed for the ongoing process of building stuff, and that's exactly what you don't want. You want to make a list of all the packages now, build them all, uh, and not have new ones turning up. Uh, and so you'd never finish then. Uh, so you want to build a static list. 
Uh, and also setting up Wanna Build as a pain in the ass, and we'd have to have email working with all the machines. And uh, so and I was looking at PyBit, because that's actually installable, and it can do multiple machines, and it's quite sensible. Uh, but in the meantime, um, Edmund wrote a 40-line shell script that did the job. <laughs> uh, and so we went, OK, well, we'll do it like that then. I guess I, he's off. He's building things already. Uh, so it turns out that actually building all of Debian is surprisingly simple. The hard part is setting up all the machines you need to build it on. Now that's a bit fiddly. Um, so they asked us to be in a hurry, and within about three days, we had actually got a first test build running, so it wasn't really very hard. Uh, so the basic design um, I recommended was try and use the standard tools as much as possible. We've got lots of cool stuff in our ecosystem. Uh, S-Build will just do builds, and you don't have to do anything complicated. Uh, use app cache so you're not downloading dependencies over and over and over and over again. Uh, use RepRepro to make a repository. That's it, really. SSH. Um, Shell and Perl. That was the sum total of our toolkit. Oh, and GPG. Um, to avoid the problem of new packages... To, well, actually, we did, all, we did all of this in Jesse, uh, but also to avoid any issues of updates, you use a snapshot, um, and then you've got a fixed set of packages that isn't changing whilst you're trying to rebuild it. Um, put test tools. I think that's a typo. Ignore that. Um, uh, yeah, so the... Um, the updated toolchain, which you're testing in this case, although you could be testing an updated anything, it's not specific to toolchains, that was just this use case, goes in an overlay repository, which is always used. You just have to make sure it's got a newer version number or some pinning to make sure those packages actually get used in the build. Uh, and one of the neat things, if you think about this for a few minutes, is you have to build the longest jobs first. If you're trying to build all of Debian as fast as possible, it's no good if the last job you do takes 14 hours, because the other 13 machines have finished, and in 13 and a half hours, the last one will finish. So you do all the big, long open office and web kit and crazy shit at the beginning, uh, or one on each machine, and then you fill them all in with the tiny jobs at the end, so they all end together. So that maximizes your uh, throughput over time. Now, actually, it turns out that's a little bit more complicated than that because at the end, you're building hundreds of tiny jobs, which all take like 40 seconds, uh, and the master that's controlling things gets a bit overloaded. So actually, you probably want to alphabetize the end of the list rather than sort it all into the tiniest jobs. But to a first approximation, slow jobs first. Uh, we used a package toolchain because that made it easy. It means S-Build can use the infrastructure. As soon as you're using binary toolchains, your life gets more complicated. Uh, and the purpose of this exercise was to have the binaries left over at the end so we could run a scanner on them and check that this uh, bad sequence never occurred. Um, and if you're doing this strictly, because we're not doing it in dependency order at all, we're just building things, we're building them against all the stuff that might be polluted. So potentially, your new binaries are still polluted by the old binaries if they've just included things. So you really ought to rebuild it all twice, to be sure. Now, in practice, we found that wasn't necessary in this case. But obviously, designing a system that can do that is a good idea. So making the toolchain is pretty simple, um, so long as there isn't too much <laughs> skew between the version you're working. So they're working on latest upstream bin utils today with this fixes in. Um, and we want a Debian package toolchain out. And actually, the easiest way to do that is just take the upstream tarball, stick the Debian packages on top, uh, bump the version so it's always newer and will get used in the build, and build it. Uh, and that's working fine. Now, you might have a problem that if you're trying to test a very old release uh, and bin utils is a long way ahead, then the Debian patch diff won't actually apply without some more work. But we just had a little stupid script that updated that. So every time a new... Because we ended up trying quite a lot of versions of this fix. Um, so there were several rebuilds of the toolchain and then rerun the, the set. Oh, and the slides have stopped again. Just marvellous. Um, if I could remember what's on the next slide, I could tell you. Here we go. Yes, so we had to make a package list to build. Now, this is the ugliest part of the whole thing. This is embarrassing. Uh, so this is the crazy Perl script that uh, uh, Edmund came up with to produce a set of all the source packages um, for you to build, um, which have an architecture-dependent part. Um, and you go, there has to be a better way, Edmund, really, surely. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure you can do it with grep decontrol, but I spent a long time trying to get grep decontrol to produce all the source packages in Debian, uh, and I could only ever get it to produce all the source packages with an ARM binary in Debian. So if someone can tell me the right rune for that, I would appreciate it, because I'm sure it can be done in like a line, really. Um, so anyway, you end up with a, just a great long list of um, packages. 
ordered the same way they are on build these with an initial number, an uh, initial letter and the actual package name and all the versions which you can give straight to sbuild, sorted by build time so that the build D just starts at the top and works its way through. So we designate one machine to control it all um, and we run a building script for each build node. It turned out we could run two of those in each build node and they didn't get any slower, so maybe we could run three. Um, and all the script does is SSH to the build node and run sbuild next line in the package list. That's it. Not very complicated. And then uh, if, if it doesn't work, you do it, try it again a second time and a third time. Uh, I would go into more detail on this, but I don't have time. If anyone cares, uh, I will be sticking all this on a wiki page so you can do it. So that is all you need to run, uh, you know, uh, rebuild everything in Debian on 14 servers, uh, two things per server, uh, create a package list and start them all off. Oh, and the thing is stuck in there. So um, I will show you the script just because uh, I'm quite pleased with how simple and mindless it is. It's not perfect by any means, um, but that's it. So basically, uh, for each uh, line in the package list, run SSH to run sbuild, and then if it finished, it runs the post build command of touch a file so that you get a list of which ones worked and which ones didn't. We built it all in Jesse. So the interesting question of whether to build with dash A, capital A or not. So that's building architecture all packages. So in principle, the only, only architecture specific packages vary uh, on your architecture and could possibly have this code in. But it's also actually interesting to build all the architecture all packages on an architecture that's not AMD64, because you'll discover a whole load of things that don't work, because no one has ever built any of those the arch all packages on other architectures, because there's no need for it. Uh, so it turns out that some of them are broken. Um, so here's a certain amount of stuff about how to set up the machines. Again, I didn't want to go into too much detail, but we have an overlay repo, install the standard tools, set up archive keys, uh, make that available over HTTP is the standard way of doing things. The cheroots we just made with sbuild create cheroot, which is nice because it sets up the scheroot config as well. It's just one file you don't have to edit. Uh, there's a few little wrinkles. Um, we're using apt-cacher, so you want to tell each cheroot to use apt-cacher. Uh, and you have to have this check valid until false thing. If you're using a snapshot, otherwise a week after you start, all your packages will stop installing because the key thing's expired. Uh, and that's incredibly annoying. Uh, so that's just a little wrinkle you discover about four days into the process. Uh, um, and you need an archive signing key for uploading to the repository. But, uh, on each build node, all you have to have is SSH and sbuild uh, and some keys so that you can do passwordless login to run those SSH com sbuild commands. Uh, it's best to have a user for doing this so that you can throw away all the config on those machines easily. We actually did it as the sbuild user, the sbuild install, but that's the wrong answer and you should use a specific okay. user for this. Uh, and you just copy over the cheroot you made. Uh, that's it really. So. Some results. So of um, 9,889 source packages which should build an ARM64 binary, turns out four of them in Jesse have missing build dependencies. That's probably a bug. <laughs> um, 15 just broke for various reasons. Seven sometimes broke, which is interesting, um, a QA result. Uh, and 99.7 of them worked, so that's pretty good. We also actually built all the Arch All packages. No, sorry, the, even though we asked it not to build all the Arch All packages, <laughs> It still tried to build some of them. And I don't know why that is. I haven't investigated that properly. That seems a bit odd. Um, I don't know if anyone knows why that is. Well, I know why they failed. Because they don't build them. Uh, they don't build the build these. They don't build them. Build these, so maintainers don't test them properly. Mm -hmm. Maintainers are bad people. Yeah, so there's, there's, there's a, this is a useful QA exercise in that you will find out some of this stuff that we ought to just fix. And we have, in fact, filed a fair number of bugs from things we discovered. So anyway, the, the, the bottom line here is it only takes 48 hours with 14 nodes to build all of Debian on ARM64. And everyone knows ARMs are incredibly slow and shit. So I thought that was quite good, actually. I was expecting it to take about a week, at least. Um, so yeah, that was good. Um, and even with the Arch All stuff, there's only about 5% of stuff that's broken. Um, and my, well, my understanding of this is it should be much faster if I built in tempfs's instead of real file systems, but it didn't actually seem to be. I don't know if that's because the kernel's really clever about its memory management these days. My experience these days is if you use um, eat my data, you get all the benefits that you used to get with tempfs without the pain. Okay. 
That is a, that's a default in some S build setups. Might be in yours. Right, possibly. Uh, an app cacher was really helpful. That does make a big difference, um, even with a fast network. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much it. Um, oh yeah, we get to find a couple of interesting bugs. If you have two users called root, uh, there's one package that won't build. Turns out all the ARM machines in the cluster have zero and one being root. Uh, and you go, okay, that's a bit weird. Uh, but apparently that's perfectly legal and it should work. Uh, and equally, uh, audit tests uses UID 890 um, and expects it not to be a user. But we've got quite a lot of users. So that's just wrong. Um, and some things just fail sometimes. Uh, and those are clearly bugs. Um, and you don't find them unless you keep rebuilding stuff. You know, in the build these, keep trying things until they've worked and then go, okay, it works, right? But actually, there's something wrong. Uh, we did discover that dash J4 is not the same as build options equals four because it parallelizes the make as well as the, so it parallelizes the Debian make file as well as the rest of your build, right? And it turns out that quite a lot of our Debian make files are not parallelizable, and there's a way of declaring it, but they don't. Right? So we really ought to put the, uh, there's, a, there's a make rune for do not try and parallelize this make file, it'll explode. Uh, and quite a lot of the files that should have that don't. Um, the key gen thing in sbuild is really annoying. You don't want to run it on your server because it takes like half an hour to get enough entropy. So you generate those once and then copy them in. Uh, and there was a bug in sbuild we discovered which confused matters. So there's the summary of this is actually the rebuilding part of everything is trivial, right? It's a tiny shell script. Um, yeah, it do doesn't cover all possible failure cases. It's a bit stupid. If the on the machine goes down, uh, it thinks everything doesn't build. Um, but one of the retries should catch that. Um, but actually, the complicated part of this is setting, creating your roots and setting up your builds with all the right keys and all that stuff, um, which is what the Amazon scripts do. But those scripts are no use at all if you're not on an Amazon cloud, or at least they're not much use in their current form. So we don't have a generic way of doing this. And I think quite a lot more people have enough machine resource to do this than used to be the case, right? You know, it was a big deal rebuilding all the Debian a few years ago. And now, uh, you know, if you can get 14 boxes together, you can do it in a couple of days. Uh, I think probably quite a lot of people uh, have access to that sort of resource. So people at ARM were terribly impressed that we could rebuild the world in, like, it took us a week from a standing start. Um, and uh, they got the answer, yes, your fix is fixed. Uh, so, uh, you know, we got some kudos for that. Uh, they, they thought the tools were nice and that this wasn't an impossible thing. So, really, the next question is what... Uh, does anybody else do this? Um, what should I do with these scripts? I can put them on a wiki page. Um, should we perhaps do more work on this collab QA script? So at the moment it supports AWS. We could, we could jam this incredibly primitive version in as well and say... Here's the dim version for people that like Shell and Perl and don't understand complicated systems. Um, uh, you know, uh, there's quite a lot more you could do to make this easy. Um, I wonder how much interest there is in that. Thank you very much, Wookie. <coughs> Are there any questions from the audience? One at the back. You had explicitly stated that uh, solving the dependency um, chain down was not a target for your work. In this but, case, yes. Um, for the general purpose of making sure um, a system is really bootstrappable, mm -hmm. uh, that would be a requirement. There have been works on that, uh, finding the proper rotor for bootstrapping, uh, which appears to be quite complicated. With the approach just rebuild with existing binaries, if you, even if you build them twice or three times, uh, I currently don't see a way to make sure that there is no more pollution from previous binaries in the row. I'm just missing some, something. Uh, no, I think you're right. Uh, you can think of really obscure, if, if something just copies something in uh, and it keeps doing that down the chain, then yeah, no number of simple rebuilds will necessarily get rid of that copied in thing. Um, so yeah, you're right, it's not perfect. Um, but it, so it very much depends what you're testing. And I have no idea how much we actually get, you know, raw inclusion of code in other packages, you know, statically linked library pieces, I suppose is probably the biggest risk. Um, so yeah, you're right, uh, it's not perfect. 
And yeah, there's, there's a much harder problem doing it in actual rigorous bootstrap order, uh, as you know. But we're also working on that. Any more? Any more? Are we done? Time yeah. to stop. Hi. So um, oh, yeah. in the Perl team, uh, we're rebuilding most of the things that depend on Perl, particularly the DXS packages against newer versions of Perl. And we do have a simple dependency or order resolution script for that use case. Um, which so, uh, and I'm aware that. Other people have probably done the same thing as well, but there's not a particularly good way to find these. So I think a wiki page which just listed these simple techniques would be really good. Right. And we can start to generalize things a bit. Because mm -hmm. there are quite a lot of little wrinkles. Having done quite a lot of this building, you know, there's a load of stuff like, oh yeah, you need to set this obscure app, um, apt variable, otherwise it'll break. And just how to get your keys in the right places. And, uh, if you haven't done this before, it will take you weeks to get all that stuff right. Mm -hmm. Whereas if somebody explains it on a wiki page, then even if you haven't got the nice script to do it in all the general cases, it's fairly painless. Uh, I also wondered if anyone knows whether there's a way to have S build this uh, create to automatically set up LVM snapshots, because that seems like a really nice way to do things rather than... Yeah, you mean it's got the dash dash make me a tarball, but it hasn't got a dash dash make me an LVM. Uh, yes, the uh, mukchirut. Uh, yes, muck s build. There is no reason why we have s build create true and muck s build, right? They just have a different set of features, and we read someone, someone should really just make them both do the good things, or well, one of them do all the things. Okay, <coughs> we have reached the allotted time. Thanks okay. again, Wookie, for this interesting talk, <coughs> and uh, Wookie will be around later for a discussion. Tomorrow.